late breaking. This is WTVA 9 News. Good Wednesday morning to you. Starting out with a few isolated showers, certainly warm and muggy. We'll show you where you can expect rain as you head out the door this morning. And later, the search resumes this morning for a possible drowning victim in Monroe County. Plus, a late night prowler is on the loose in Lee County. We'll tell you what neighborhood caught his face on camera. All right, and we're talking a uh, few showers and storms this morning on Storm Track Doppler 9. We have uh, heavy downpours now tracking through portions of Tallahatchie County, moving through uh, the Charleston area, those slowly pushing to the north and east. So expect some heavy downpours along I 55 from Enid to Oakland down here toward Tillatoba, and uh, perhaps a few more back into parts of western Grenada County very shortly. As we uh, zoom out just a little bit here, uh, we can see the rest of the area, and uh, we can see that there are uh, a few. A few more showers and storms uh, trying to develop in some spots here over parts of Marshall County and a few little spotty showers out near the Columbus Air Force Base behind that. Uh, we, besides that, we are starting out with temperatures in the low to mid 70s, a very mild and humid start to the day with a few more showers and storms on tap for your Wednesday afternoon. We'll have a look at this and where you might see rain uh, and what they might provide for your forecast coming up. We're expecting to learn more this morning on the five year old who died after an accidental shooting in Winston County. WTBA's Cody Long has been following the story and tells us what police know about this case. Five year old Jeremiah Brown was found dead inside a home here at the intersection of High Point Ware Road and Shelley Brown Road. Winston County Sheriff Jason Pugh says five year old Jeremiah and his six year old brother were playing with a gun. A shot rang out and then the father found Jeremiah dead in a bedroom. The father worked the overnight shift and was asleep at the time. Sheriff Pugh says the tragic shooting happened shortly after lunch this afternoon. Deputies are still trying to determine if the five-year-old accidentally shot himself or if his brother accidentally shot him. We were able to speak with the boy's father, and he declined to talk on camera. He was visibly shaken and devastated, and he's asked for some space while the family grieves. As of now, the body is in pearl for an autopsy. We're waiting to find out when the search will resume this morning for a possible drowning victim. Monroe County Sheriff Cecil Cantrell says he received a call about a 53-year-old woman. She reportedly may have drowned near the Lock and Dam. A search quickly ensued near the Devil's Elbow area close to Highway 45 and Highway 45 Bridge in Aberdeen. It ended last night about 9 p.m. Her name has yet to be released. A family in Corinth grieves the loss of two children by plane crash this morning. They were killed last Saturday in Georgia while on vacation. Authorities say the plane broke apart in midair, taking the lives of 10 year old siblings, Kinsley Winston and Austin Day. Austin lived with his grandmother, Mary Jo Rarbo of Tennessee. She and her husband, Dexter Gresham, also died in the crash. Kinsley was staying with her great aunt in Corinth. Over them kids. Perfect for me. I just loved him to death. I wish I had him with me. But we always can't get what we want all the time. They just, they'll be together now, and we're going to keep them together. We're going to bring both of them back here and put them both together. Workers at the Corinthian Funeral Home say the bodies of the siblings will arrive sometime next week. The cause of the crash is still under investigation. Lee County Police need your help this morning to identify a prowler. Take a look at this surveillance video. It captured a picture of a prowler from the home in the Auburn area of Lee County. Now, if you know this man, call the Lee County Sheriff's Department. And we're expecting an arraignment later today of a Starkville man accused of striking a disabled person. Cleotonia Tony Burns was arrested at his home in Starkville on a probable cause warrant. Investigators say that Burns allegedly struck a 21-year-old intellectually and physically disabled patient. The 34-year-old was a direct care provider at Brandy's Hope Community Services in Tupelo. If convicted, he faces up to 20 years in prison and a $10,000 fine. We're expecting a bankrupt South employee, bank employee to be arraigned today on counterfeit and embezzlement charges. The feds arrested Crystal Gill of Batesville following a three-count indictment by a federal grand jury. She's accused 
of swapping about 15 grand in counterfeit $150 bills for 15 grand in real money. Federal prosecutors also accused the bank teller of taking nearly $4,000 from a customer's bank account in March. If convicted on all three charges, she faces no more than 50 years in a federal prison. The time now is 4.35. Let's check in with meteorologist Joel Young for a closer look at our severe weather authority forecast. Are we expecting clear skies today? You know, there will be times when there will be clear skies, believe it or not. But it will be deceiving because there will be some spots where we do have scattered showers and storms. And uh, that's what we're already seeing, at least isolated storms. At any point today, there will probably be some showers and storms somewhere. But if you plan to do some yard work today, when would be the best time? Probably first thing in the morning for two different reasons. It's going to be cooler early in the morning, temperatures in the low to mid 70s. Very humid, either way you cut it. Go into the afternoon, it's hot, we go up to 91 degrees, and your rain chances go up. We go from a 20% chance early in the morning to a 40% chance in the afternoon. And anytime you're out there, make sure you're wearing your sunscreen. UV index today is going to be about an 11. A few spotty and showers and storms early this morning. They increase in coverage as we go into the afternoon. We'll see a lull in the activity overnight with another round tomorrow, which will be a little bit more widespread. We'll have a closer look at that, plus your fishing forecast coming up in just a few moments. Thanks, Joel. A Mississippi lawmaker criticizes the vandalism of a civil rights historical marker. Now, this comes after Representative Carl Oliver said that people should be lynched for removing Confederate monuments. A local newspaper reports that Oliver demands state leadership to protect our historical past. Oliver's district is where Emmett Till was kidnapped and killed in 1955 for allegedly whistling at a white woman in a grocery store. Till's historic marker has been vandalized at least three times in the last two months. The Mississippi Highway Patrol ends its 4th of July enforcement period at midnight last night. We now have the early numbers this morning from MHP's Click in the Click campaign. So far, the Mississippi Highway Patrol has given out 661 traffic citations since Friday. Sergeant Ray Hall says 65 people a oh, 65 rather were for people who were unbuckled in the back seat. Now, you may recall the new law that became effective Saturday requires all passengers in a vehicle to buckle up. 15 DUI arrests were made and there were 15 collisions but no fatalities. A Tippahaw County deputies need your help this morning regarding two puppies found inside a garbage bag. They're seeking information after finding the puppies on the side of the road in Horseshoe Circle in Starkville. The local Humane Society tells us the dogs appear to be healthy and are on their way to a foster home. Now, if you have information, please call the Ottibaha County Sheriff's Department. An explosion shakes the streets of the city, sending several people to the hospital. What police say that reduced this house to a pile of rubble. And a missile launch sends other countries scrambling into a meeting. How close they are saying this projectile could get to America. Plus, we're tracking a few isolated heavy downpours that could impact your morning commute. We'll show you where those are and where they may be heading next. Coming up next, along with your fishing game forecast. Stay with us. We'll be right back. Now, your WTVA Severe Weather Authority forecast with meteorologist Joel Young. Welcome back and good morning to you. The time is now 441 on a Wednesday morning. We're tracking a few showers and storms. Some heavy downpours now moving through the Teletoba area right along Highway 51 and I-55. Some lightning strikes associated with that. So be aware of that when you're traveling down I-55. If you're heading out the door this morning, maybe get inside as quick, a little bit faster because, of course, that lightning can be a little bit uh, of a forgotten threat. Now, we have some pop-up showers there along the Lafayette and uh, Panola County line just north of Enid Lake. But if we were tra to track this heaviest downpour that's moving at roughly 20 miles per hour. That's going to make it up toward the Long Branch area around 511, so just a little bit after the top of the hour moving across the Highway 32 corridor. Elsewhere, we're seeing a few spotty showers develop up into parts of Lafayette and into Marshall County. By the way, fishing game forecast looks like the best fishing today will be around midday. Good fishing for today, but not so much for tomorrow as rain chances increase. We'll have another look at that coming up. Three people are recovering this morning after a home exploded in Missouri. Now, this was a scene in St. Joseph where a home was reduced to a pile of rubble following the explosion. Officials say that three people were pulled from the home by neighbors who came to the rescue. Police say two men and a woman were taken to a local hospital 
with non-life-threatening injuries. The cause of the explosion is still under investigation. America's annual birthday celebration hit all the right notes during the holiday. And one of the biggest shows took place in the nation's capital. Hundreds of thousands of people jammed into the National Mall where fireworks shot into the sky high above our national landmarks. And U.S. Senators were in Afghanistan to spend Independence Day with American troops. The visit comes as President Donald Trump's administration is working to prepare a new Afghan war strategy amid a resurgent Taliban and an ISIS affiliated affiliate rather in that country. An emergency U.N. Security Council meeting on North Korea will take place today. The U.S., Japan and South Korea requested the emergency meeting to be held in the open chamber. U.N. Ambassador Nikki Haley and her counterparts from the two other countries want to address North Korea's latest intercontinental ballistic missile launch. Analysts say the missile could put all of Alaska in range for the first time. The man suspected in the case of a missing exchange student will be in federal court today for a bond hearing. 27-year-old Brent Christensen was arrested last Friday in connection with the June, June 9th disappearance of Ying Zhang. Now, authorities do not believe that Zhang Yang is still alive. Preparations are underway in Warsaw, Poland, where the nation readies for President Trump's first visit to the country before heading to the G20 summit in Germany. The president is expected to give a speech in Warsaw's square, his first major outdoor address in a foreign country. Now, leaders in the region are looking for reassurances from President Trump that the U.S. and NATO troops will there will continue so long as the region's security is threatened by a resurgent Russia. The time now is 444, and when we come back, Joel will have a complete look at your severe weather authority forecast, and later we'll have the latest in local sports. Stay with us. Now, your WTVA severe weather authority forecast with meteorologist Joel Young. Welcome back to WTVA 9 News today. The time is now 447. We're already tracking a few showers and storms out there as you step out the door this morning, mainly over our western counties. Uh, you can see here on Storm Track Doppler 9, the big picture shows just an isolated cluster, but we're noticing a little bit more development. We'll show you where here in a moment. Let's show you where the heaviest of this is at this point. Some lightning and thunder already developing with this development here just to the east of Charleston, right along I-55 there uh, around Tillatoba. That's moving up toward the Long Branch area. Oakland moving up toward the Highway 32 corridor just south of Enid Lake. We're seeing a little bit more development over Lafayette County as well. A heavy downpour now right along 315 between Batesville and Water Valley. That's going to move up toward Taylor, move up toward Oxford, where there's already a few heavy downpours, one just north of town, uh, north of Highway 30 uh, interchange there. Here's a live look in Oxford. This is at University. This is south of that heavy downpour. No rainfall at the moment. So only a 20% chance of a few of these hit or miss showers. There will be parts of town that see rain and parts that don't. But as we go into the afternoon, that will increase. Temperatures right now at 75 degrees, and uh, those winds light out of the south southeast all day. Those winds could be a little bit br uh, breezier or gustier if you have a thunderstorm that passes over your area. Those rain chances go up to 30% by the mid to late morning hours. That will go up to about 40% heading into the afternoon. Temps get into the mid 80s by 11 a.m. We'll be into the low 90s this afternoon. Temperatures across the area, we have some mid and upper 70s. That is just a testament of just how humid the air is in place. The more humid it is, the cooler or the warmer it is overnight, I should say. And we also have, on top of that humidity, several areas of low pressure that are just lingering across the Tennessee Valley just to our north, some over the Ozarks, and one back into Texas. And in between these, you get a stationary boundary that sparks the uplift necessary for these showers and storms to develop. And it feeds off of this fuel that's in place. So more showers and storms expected to sweep through our area today. Again, spotty showers and storms to start out with. Storm tracker not quite picking up on that in this run here. But going into the afternoon, you will notice more of the scattered development. Hit or miss, not everybody's going to see that. And when you're not seeing rain, you're probably seeing sunshine, heat, humidity. You're out there maybe trying to uh, enjoy some time at the pool. Maybe you're trying to get some yard work done. That's a great time to have that Weather Authority app handy because 
Uh, of course, if you see any dark clouds, you can check the app and you can look at the storm track Doppler feature and it will tell you when there's lightning within range of your area. Of course, you don't have to be right underneath that cloud where it's raining to be struck by lightning. That is a forgotten danger. On top of that, could be some gusty winds at times. So we'll be watching that very closely and, of course, some heavy downpours overnight, maybe a lull in the activity, but that air of low pressure taps into more of that heat and humidity tomorrow. So we see scattered showers and storms. Maybe even some areas of heavy rainfall that try to linger in the same spots. We have to watch for flash flooding with that. That's typical for this time of year. Highs also typical for this time of year. Upper 80s to lower 90s, maybe some upper 80s in Ripley, Corinth, and Iuka, but don't get too excited about that because you know it's going to feel more like mid to upper 90s in most of these spots. 91 degrees, 91. Again, this doesn't tell the whole story. You're going to see heat index values mid to upper 90s across the entire area. The ones who do see showers and storms, perhaps you think you're not lucky. Well, at least it cools you down briefly, but at least once the sun comes out after that shower, it just gets hot and muggy again. And that's the case again for your Thursday. Perhaps a little bit cooler thanks to more widespread activity. Friday, we're looking more isolated stuff. Highs in the low 90s. And you know what? That remains the case through the weekend into the first of next week. But again, just hit or miss stuff. So don't cancel any outdoor plans. Just have an indoor alternative available. That's your forecast. Sports is next after this. Now, WTBA Sports with Sports Director Jim Holder. Good morning. Well, how about this? A couple of ICC, former ICC baseball players are currently in the Arizona Summer League. Tyreek Reed of Holka signing with the Rangers last month. Delvin Zinapontitok signed with the Cubs last year. In the majors on Independence Day, Ole Miss products Lance Lynn on the mound for the Cardinals as they hosted the Marlins. Lynn looking for a seventh win of the season. He was bunting in the bottom of the third. However, Marlins get the force at second. Uh, Lynn would be chased in the sixth inning, though Greg Garcia would give him the lead here. Marlins going to win this one with a final score of 5-2. to two. Much better day for the Pontotoc Cardinals. They are your 14-year-old Dizzy Dean State champions. Received a lot of pictures on this, so thanks. Pontotoc defeated Houston 17-2 to in an all-area affair to capture the crown. By the way, the Dizzy Dean 14-year-old state tournament was played in Horn Lake. And for more, as always, be sure to check out WTVA.com and the WTVA News app. And the showers and storms over our western counties continue to become a little bit more widespread. Temperatures, by the way, across the entire area, mostly mid-70s, some in the upper 70s. Again, these are hit or miss. Not everyone's seeing rain this morning, but if you look a little bit closer over the last couple of hours, we've seen a cluster back into the delta move toward the Charleston area. And ahead of that, a few heavy downpours are developing, each one becoming heavier as every minute goes by. And of course, the heavier they become, the more lightning they're producing. In fact, we're seeing a few strikes of lightning now southwest of Oxford, that likely moving into Oxford proper within the next 30 minutes. So be aware of that. Probably some heavy rainfall. If you're heading out the door, grab a uh, raincoat, an umbrella. You may not need it all day. In fact, I can guarantee you, you won't need it all day. Day. Spotty showers and storms uh, for many areas. Of course, there will be some that manage to stay dry all day long. Tomorrow, a little more likely that you'll see scattered showers and storms. Highs getting up to about 89 degrees, so a little bit cooler thanks to the more widespread showers and storms. But you know, with the humidity, it's going to feel more like mid 90s at the very least. Going into your Friday and Saturday, a little more spotty, a little more isolated, so highs manage to get into the low 90s in most spots. Sunday, very much a similar story. Monday, very much a similar story once again. Maybe some slightly drier air for that. 91 on Monday, but still isolated showers and storms. Lows down to 69. Then Tuesday, a few more of those showers and storms. Your repetitive July forecast for North Mississippi continues, although Wednesday and Thursday looks like we'll see slightly more widespread activity than typical for us July afternoon. Katrina? And coming up on WTBA 9 News today, an accidental shooting leaves a family without a five year old this morning. The investigation leads police to decide between the shooter being age five or age six.